Good afternoon and welcome to our diversity and inclusion training for the future officers in the San Marcos Police Academy. Our topic today is the Black Lives Matter movement. So just a little bit about myself. My name is Jonathan B. Parker II and I'm a current student at Texas State obtaining my second bachelor's degree in communication studies. I've currently received my first bachelor's of arts in international studies at Texas State University in 2018. And I am also a social justice advocate. So the agenda for today's discussion, we're gonna be speaking about Black Lives Matter movement as a social justice topic, ways in which the movement is a social justice topic. We're gonna to talk about some history and then case studies in regards to the movement. And then we're going to discuss strategies for intervention and upstanding behavior when we see discriminatory behavior. And then we're going to speak about some real life conversations. <clears throat> so hot topic, Black Lives Matter movement. This is a very sticky and very sensitive topic that is hard to talk about, but it's necessary that we get some conversations going in regards to the relationship that law enforcement has with our community in today's society. And number one, we need to acknowledge the divided society in which we live in and understand the political climate that our country is currently have, um, having. And by engaging in these difficult conversations, we are relieving some of the pressure that has just built up over time. And this training will then help to promote and advocate for equal human rights, um, specifically equal human rights for our Black community members. So let's get stuck in. Black Lives Matter movement as a social justice topic. Social justice has four different elements according to human rights careers. Human rights, access, participation, and equity. All of these four elements are so necessary and highlight the ways in which social justice is a topic and so prominent in today's society. So racial inequality and the basic human rights are some of the issues that Black Lives Matter incorporates in their efforts of raising awareness and accountability in law enforcement is also another huge aspect which comes into play in regards to the current climate and the current treatment of the interactions between law enforcement and Black community members. So let's talk about some history. When did this issue come into play? Well, this issue of racist and discriminatory behavior has always been an issue in the United States of America because injustices against the black community have been occurring for centuries dating back to the 1600s, according to People Magazine. And that goes all the way back to slave patrolling in the US, which was formerly known as the British colonies. And slavery was legal until 1865, um, which that says in itself. Um, Jim Crow laws were state and local laws enforcing segregation, um, denying social, economic, and civil, civil rights um, such as voting and redlining districts is another aspect that refused mortgages to Black community members, only making subdivisions white population. And the war on drugs during the Nixon era in the 1970s basically was aimed to lock up Black men and women that are in the lower socioeconomic class just because of their race. And it gave harsher sentences to drug offenses and even lower 
drug offenses. So that's some of the previous history that the adversities of the Black community have had to face. And so where this issue of social justice that the Black community is trying to raise awareness, it all happened in 2013 by Alicia Garza, Opal Tomati, and Patrice Cullors. In 2013, they created the response of Black Lives Matter when George, the trial of George Zimmerman was acquitted by murdering Trayvon Martin in 2013. And so that was on Black Lives Matter's website. And so it started in 2013, but we really didn't see it exacerbate too much until 2020 over the protests of the murder of George Floyd by Derek Chauvin. And so it is estimated by 15 to 26 million people protested over the unjust murder um, that law enforcement officer Derek Chauvin murdered George Floyd. And that was by New York Times in 2020. And it's also important to note that Derek Chauvin has been convicted of second degree murder, third degree murder, and second degree manslaughter. But the issue here at hand is the police brutality against the Black community. And so the issue is in our law enforcement and in our society. And so Black Lives Matter is just really trying to have a call to action of accountability of law enforcement and to raise awareness and help the country as a whole understand of what is going wrong and what we need to do to have accountability and to change from here. And so we like to think that the evolution of America, we've come so far and so much progress has been made, but there, there needs to be more progress and there needs to be more accountability of law enforcement. And so um, I'm here to speak to you today to raise awareness and to get some understanding and raise awareness of the issues and the reasons of why Black Lives Matter is so prominent in today's society. So a couple of case studies that the Black Lives Matter promote. Um, recently in the news, we saw a incident happen. I'm sure all of you have seen it. But on April 11th of this year, um, policewoman Kim Potter uh, mistakenly shot her Glock instead of her taser um, at Dante Wright during a routine traffic stop. And so this is just one of the many cases that we've seen of um, lack of training or awareness um, against the Black community. And so this is one of the, the cases that they recognize. And we've seen it time and time again. And we just want to raise awareness in regards to situations such as this. But on that note, another positive outcome that the Black Lives Matter tries to incorporate in their organization is the foundation itself granted financial relief funds to recipients during the pandemic while awaiting our stimulus check from the government. And so you could apply for this grant and you receive funds to help Black community members during this financial hardship during the pandemic. And that was from ABC's website. So really just helping to aid their community member and to stand strong together is another aspect of their organization. So we have some intervention and upstanding strategies against discrimination 
discriminatory behavior when we see situations happen. Number one, self-talk into action. We need to self-talk and get ourselves out there and not just be a bystander, but to be an upstanding citizen. We need to focus on the target, not the aggressor. And by using our body language and position is so important to promote confidence and to de-escalate the situation. And by using your tone and volume, that will help the situation a lot. And also it's important to use the crowd as a resource because we don't want to make the target feel alienated and we want to overall help de-escalate the situation when we see discriminatory behavior happen or hate language happen or any kind of um, racist remarks, behavior that can turn into something bigger. And in the end, we want to support the target and make sure that they're okay and just ask them, are you okay? Is there anything I can do for you? Um, to really just make sure that they are okay. And some difficult conversations that I have had with one of my best friends, I'll let you read the comic here and then we can discuss. But in essence, overall, the conversation um, that was had and my friend Corey and I were discussing how that in the midst of different people's opinions and political views, it's important that we speak up for ourselves and speak up for the community members, such as the Black community who need voices, their voices to be heard and we need to speak up for them. And no one said that Black lives matter are the only lives that matter. It's just they're the lives right now that need our help and they need their voices to be heard. So Black Lives Matter as a whole is just trying to raise awareness and promote accountability in law enforcement and promote change in the system. And I just want to thank you all today for sitting here during this presentation. And I hope you learned some information that will be helpful during your time in law enforcement. Thank you.